fans. They're an important part of your PC, but they're also something a lot of us don't really look into. After all, as long as they spin, they're good, right? Well, I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but there is a bit more to it than that. G'day legends, Jono here from Thermaltake Australia, and today I'm gonna break down some misconceptions about fans, so that you know everything you need to know when looking into buying new fans for your PC, and then how and where to install them once you do. You could be forgiven for thinking that every PC fan is the same. After all, they all have a frame, some blades, and well, they spin. <laughs> However, it's the frame and the blade design that actually differentiates the fans. And of course, their sizes too, but for the sake of this video, let's just compare 120mm fans. If you pay close attention, you can notice the design of the fan blades are constructed differently. Some are closer together and even look like they're half a mil away from the frame while others have blades spaced far apart and are further away from the frame. The differences in blade design are what tends to dictate the purpose of the fan. So some will be geared towards producing huge amounts of airflow, while others will be designed to push large volumes of air through tight spaces using static pressure. If this is something you want more details on, let us know in the comments below and we can make a fan guide video I've been wanting to do for honestly years. So long, at this point it's basically a meme in the office. This isn't so straightforward. I think it's human nature to believe more is always better, but adding more fans could actually be a bad thing. You could be introducing more noise and you could introduce turbulence uh, to the airflow setup in your case, or it could actually go in a positive direction and more fans could mean cooler temperatures at lower noise levels if you set low RPMs. It's really a hard one to give you a solid answer on as it's very specific to a build as it can change depending on the case and the hardware being used. As a loose guide, my recommendation is at a bare minimum, a standard MATX or ATX case should have three fans. This does include an all-in-one radiator, but does not include a CPU tower cooler or stock cooler. You can easily create a negative or a positive airflow configuration with three fans, and Michael's done a good video on basic airflow configurations that you can check out here as well. Always is such a strong word because it means absolute. And no, not the vodka. Some of us get caught up with placing fans in an orientation based on how they look when facing a certain way. Who can blame you? But what you might not know is that fans actually have a direction of airflow. Normally, the logo side of the fan is the intake side, and the small text serial number side is the exhaust direction. So the orientation in which you install your fans entirely depends on your desired airflow setup, actually not what it looks the best in. In saying this though, some fans might be designed differently, so double check on the side of your fan frame as there will be a direction of airflow. So depending on whether you want your fan to intake or exhaust it, will determine which direction your fan needs to be mounted inside of your case. This is a tricky one because it will depend on the stock fan. Every case manufacturer will have different quality stuff and this will also change depending on how expensive your case actually is. To put it simply, for most people, stock fans should suffice. If you are running just standard hardware and not overclocking, you would potentially find the performance changes pretty negligible. However, if you're packing some heat like a 3080 card paired with a flagship CPU, upgrading to some high airflow fans should definitely be on the shopping list for next upgrade time for sure. Additionally though, I do want to mention that the number of fans, more so than the individual quality of one particular fan, will be a bigger factor here. Having enough fans to push air through your case and help dissipate heat is by far the more important element to factor in when it comes to configurating your next build. Now this doesn't read like a big question, but it is a mammoth one to tackle. Traditionally, all-in-one radiators like this isn't, but it's easier to hold, would be paired with high static pressure fans because the fans will need to overcome essentially two tiers of resistance. As in the fins on the radiator, these things, and then the mesh of your case. 
to either pull air through them or push air out depending on how the fans are configured and how you place your all-in-one radiator in your case. However, you could see better results if your fans do not need to overcome such a resistance. As an example, if your case is actually an open design or if there isn't a fine mesh dust filter or fine mesh front panel design with high airflow fans. Regarding performance differences here, you could see a one or even a two degree difference in some instances. So if that matters to you, I would really consider what your configuration is like and then pick fans accordingly. To get you started, if you're wanting high static pressure fans, I would say look for fans with a rating of above two mils of water column. And yes, that's a fluid dynamics related measurement. And if you're seeing that your fans will not have to overcome a high resistance and you're hunting for high airflow fans, look for fans with around 55 cubic feet per minute or higher ratings. Don't you just love the crossover between metric and imperial measurements? No. Alrighty, let's talk about tower coolers here too. Honestly, it does depend on the design of the tower cooler. Do we have one here? Yes, yeah. we do. But most fans that come bundled with them are already pretty well optimized. So I really wouldn't see the need to change the fans for performance, but more aesthetic reasons. However, I'm sure there's some bad pairings out there. So I would urge you to look at the design of the tower fins and determine using the information I've already given you to pick out an appropriate style of fan. So if the fins are tightly packed together, Go for a static pressure fan, but if the fins are spaced out, kind of like this, which I do think most towers are, I'd go with some high airflow fans. There's one more important thing to mention, especially since both coolers are directed at cooling the CPU, make sure the fans you are upgrading to are PWM. In very layman terms, this means that they will speak with your motherboard's BIOS and adjust their speeds in accordance with your motherboard's fan curve and will kick into high RPMs when needed to cool your CPU. Well, there you have it, five common fan misconceptions all cleared up for you so you can now go forth and buy your fresh new fans and install them with a clear mind. If you have any other fan questions, feel free to pop them in the comments below and we will try and answer them for you. If you did enjoy this video, of course, please leave it a like and double tap the dislike button if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel too if you haven't already and we put out videos every Wednesday and Friday. But make sure you ding the bell to be notified every time we miss that upload schedule because churches are we will. And finally, check out either of these Thermaltake videos right here and we will see you next time. Or me, I'll see you next time. You'll see me next time. There's one more important thing to mention. The world is dying, especially since we now use 38s.